In this lesson, I'll show you three examples on how to determine the atomic size based on where the element is positioned on the periodic table. Question one reads, on the basis of periodic trends, choose the larger atom from each pair. So we have four separate examples and we'll start with A. We have nitrogen and fluorine. Nitrogen atoms are larger than fluorine atoms because as you trace the path between nitrogen and fluorine on the periodic table, as shown on your screen, you move to the right within the same period. And as you move to the right across a row, the nucleus gets larger. Therefore, the effective nuclear charge experienced by the outermost electrons increases. So even though fluorine is to the right of nitrogen, its nucleus is larger than nitrogen's, so those outer electrons will be attracted to the core, therefore causing the radius, or the overall radius, to be smaller. So we can comfortably say that nitrogen is larger. Next, we move on to carbon versus germanium. Germanium atoms are larger than carbon atoms because as you trace the path between carbon and germanium on the periodic table, you move down a column. And take a look, if you see the periodic table on your screen, atomic size increases as you move down a column because the outermost electrons occupy orbitals with a higher principal quantum number. And for this reason, they're larger, resulting into a larger atom overall. So germanium is definitely larger than carbon. In question C, we have nitrogen versus aluminum. Aluminum atoms are larger than nitrogen atoms because as you trace the path between nitrogen and aluminum on the periodic table as shown, you move down a column, which increases the atomic size automatically, and then to the left across a row also increases the atomic size. These effects added together increase the overall size. And finally in question D we have to compare aluminum to germanium. This one is an ambiguous case. Based on the periodic trends alone you can't tell which atom is larger. In fact, it goes down a column, but it also goes to the right across a row, which decreases atomic size. These effects tend to oppose each other, and it's not as straightforward to tell which one dominates the other in terms of its size. So this one is unknown. Let's move on to question two. On the basis of periodic trends, choose the larger atom from each pair. So we're doing the exact same thing. This time we're comparing tin with iodine. Taking a look at the periodic table underneath, Tin is found right here and iodine is found right here. For the exact same reason as to why nitrogen was larger than fluorine, tin is larger than iodine because as you move to the right across a row, the nucleus gets larger so those outer electrons are attracted more towards the inside. So tin wins that battle. Germanium versus polonium. Germanium's right here and polonium's situated there. We're moving down a column and to the right. Moving down a column automatically makes the atom bigger. So we know that polonium is larger than germanium, even though it's moved to the right of the row. Next, we compare chromium with tungsten. So chromium is here, tungsten is down here. We're moving down a column. We can automatically assume that chromium is the smaller of the two. Finally, fluorine versus selenium. Fluorine is right here and selenium is two columns below and to the left. Given that selenium is at a higher principal quantum number, we can assume that selenium is larger than fluorine. In question number three, we have to arrange these elements in decreasing radius, so from largest to smallest. Let's find them on the periodic table. We have S, C, A, F, R, B, and S, I. Sulfur, calcium, fluorine, rubidium, and silicon. Right from the get-go, we know that fluorine is going to be the smallest of them all because it has a lower principal quantum number than the rest. Now we look at silicon and sulfur. Given that sulfur has a larger nucleus, we assume that silicon is larger because the larger the nucleus, the stronger that internal attraction towards the nucleus for those outer electrons. So silicon and then comes sulfur. And between these two, we can assume that calcium is the smaller of the two because rubidium is at a higher principal quantum number. So we go from Rb to calcium to silicon, sulfur, then fluorine. And there you have it. That is how to determine the atomic size based on periodic trends.